So I don't think it's any secret that I play a lot of first person shooter games. It's so bad that sometimes I'm teased by my pals that I won't hop on a game simply because it doesn't have any firearms in it. But this statement is not entirely true. There's one series that I somehow always find myself going back to, probably because it gives me the same competitive feeling as FPS games do. That series being Pokemon. In fact, this was the very first game series I played at a whopping six years old. Very recently, I went to watch the best of the best play at the North American National Championships, and it was a blast. But I had one problem. I had no idea what was going on the entire time. So I thought, after I got home, why don't I try to fix that? What's going on guys, Poet here, and today I'm going to learn how to play competitive VGC Pokemon. Now if you're completely new to this, like I am, you're probably wondering, where did I even begin to start? Well, unfortunately, I have to do a lot of what I thought was over when I graduated school, reading. Let me tell you, I did plenty and plenty of reading. I knew some basic stuff from over 15 years of playing the base games, but not enough of the finer details to actually stand a chance if I ever enter any kind of competition. From some previous experience that I've had with some of my friends being competitive players, I knew that Smogon University was a place I should check out, but I've also been watching a lot, and I mean a lot, of Wolfie VGC, and I know he has the VGC guide, so I also checked that out. It was the first time I'd ever been on either of these sites, and surprisingly, they helped a lot. I quickly discovered that Smogon is actually just a super cool site that gives me pretty much battle-ready Pokemon and... Tells me almost exactly what I have to do to get them ready for that battle. I also really don't have to read on this site as much as I have to just understand what they're showing me on the screen. Which, admittedly, wasn't as hard as I anticipated. The only thing that I really had to do was look at EVs and IVs because I was super unfamiliar with how much they mattered in the competitive scene. And truth be told, I always kind of feared them. After reading on the site though, I'm not sure why I ever feared them to begin with. They were pretty straightforward to understand from a quick Google search, and after what I saw on Smogon, I felt pretty much completely good on everything that site had to offer. So I moved on to the VGC guide. Not to very much surprise, there was a lot of good information here and a lot of good guides. Although it was very general, I think that was kind of the point of the guides. It seemed much more like a blanket way to learn VGC than anything. It taught me some basic terms and I actually found myself taking notes again. Eventually, I got to the team building section. This was probably the densest part of my reading because there were a lot of sections in this little area of the guide. I tried to pay extra close attention on these pages because building a team for double battles as well as just double battles in general are pretty foreign to me. There was a lot to read here and as much as I'd like to tell you guys what the most important tips were mentioned in the guide, I really can't because I think that they were all very important. With this new info, I felt like I was finally getting the basic gist of things. I had to create a team though, so I bit the bullet and went to Pokemon Showdown to do so. This was the first time I had ever used Pokemon Showdown, so it took me a minute to figure out how to operate it and how to go about creating my own account. Then I began to think about what I saw at day two of the Nationals, the day when Regulation D dropped. I looked up a team I thought might be able to get me through the toughest team Showdown could throw at me. The idea I had initially was to set up a Bronzong Trick Room play since he is bulkier, and if I played my cards right, I could sweep whole teams with him. I wanted to step outside of the box and use one of my personal favorite Pokemon as well. I knew he was used in the past, but I also knew I needed a fast Pokemon to make the Trick Room work. Who better to be my speedster than, of course, Fluttermane. Next I wanted to try some Pokemon that I hadn't used in any of the games before. So I went with some of the other commonly seen Pokemon like Amoongus, Annihilate, and Goldango. Then I grabbed Rotom Wash because I've only ever heard good things about it, even if it was an older pick. With this in mind, I decided to try my luck. I started with the goal of playing three matches and winning one. I knew I was new to this whole thing, but I was confident in my team, its abilities, and my decision making ability. What I hadn't accounted for was how much the metagame shifted because of the new Pokemon returning through Pokemon Home thanks to the new regulations. I just so happened to choose to get into VGC three days after these new format changes took place. That means I was pretty much jumping into a crapshoot of teams that weren't consistent. And a crapshoot it was. 
Honestly, I got thrashed. I lost all three games and I got whooped hard in each one. I think my best being my last just in terms of how long I lasted in battle. I tried to think of everything I'd done wrong. Why didn't my strategies work? Why did my team seem so mid compared to everyone else's? And how on earth am I going to counter legendary Pokemon? But I didn't have the headspace to think about these. I was tired and decided to try and sleep considering that I chose to do these battles at 2.30 in the morning. Day 2 started optimistically. Despite the losses, I was more eager to get back in the ring than ever. But I needed to focus on what screwed me the night before. The new and it's unknown metagame was kicking in. me in the rear, and I had to find a good counter to it. I determined that my problem started with how fast and uninformative I chose moves, and how my party didn't have any cohesion between each other. If I was going to win any matches at all, my team had to work in unison and I had to know both what my opponent's moves were and what I could do to counter them. The new problem was, everyone else was trying to do the same thing, and a lot of people were scrambling to cook up good teams. I guess these types of changes don't happen often in the competitive season, but I would assume that's for a good reason. Do you think any of this actually discouraged me though? I've dug myself into too deep of a hole to quit writing the script now. I had to just get one win to make sure I could actually do this and not feel like a total poser. So I got busy. Busy reading again! Woohoo! I love reading! When I got burnt out of reading or if I wanted to take a break, I also searched up Bronzong teams for Regulation D and just Bronzong teams in general because I know I wanted to use Bronzong. While I was digging around, I found a team created by someone with the username Mushy. I thought the team looked good and the only Pokemon on the team I wanted to change was the Arcanine. I figured that there might be something else that was just a little bit more viable with Intimidate. I never really used Urshifu or Dragonite up to this point, and three of these six Pokemon were on my original team that I crafted myself. It pretty much fit every parameter I had set for myself at the beginning. I decided to dig around just a little bit more to see if I could find a viable replacement. I decided Landorus Therium would be a suitable replacement for Arcanine. My team looked great on paper, and I was slowly starting to regain some of the confidence I'd lost the night before. With this new addition, I decided to get in there and try my luck again. Right off the bat, I found myself in a rather scary situation. The team I was up against had a lot of counters to my Fluttermane, Amoongus, and most importantly, my Bronzong. With that in mind, I also noticed I had a lot of counters specifically to those counters with Urshifu, Fluttermane, and Landorus. However, my hard counter to almost everyone on their team was Urshifu. And my thought process was he would bring either Hydreigon or Dragonite and leave Dundun Sparse out of the match entirely. Meaning Torkoal, Grabominable, and Arboleva were a guarantee. I decided to lead with Amoongus and Bronzong and tried to set up my Bronzong sweep while keeping Fluttermane and Urshifu in the back to hit things like Torkoal and Hydreigon. What I did not foresee happening was them leading with Drought Torkoal and Hydreigon. Drought Torkoal was not good for half of my team. That half being the ones that were on the field. I knew I had to get creative to set up this Bronzong powerhouse and I had to do it fast. My original plan was to Rage Powder Amoongus and semi-sacrifice it, ensuring my Bronzong had the time it needed to bulk up. That might have worked had I not accidentally switched Protect out for Trick Room on Bronzong. Because the Torkoal knew Heat Wave, that meant Rage Powder was useless here. I tried to initiate a damage control by sporing the Hydreigon to buy me some time, but Amoongus got taken out by Flamethrower, and Bronzong is barely able to hurt Torkoal just a little bit before he's swept away by another heat wave. Things were looking down. I had barely dented the Torkoal, and half of my team had already been wiped out. They still had their entire team with them, but I wasn't ready to give up. I was done reading. I sent in Fluttermane and Urshifu, my Hail Marys at this rate. Every move counted at this point. Fluttermane had a life orb, which meant even if it wasn't hit directly, its lifespan was limited. I started off by returning the favor with Fluttermane by using a move that would hurt both of their Pokemon, Dazzling Gleam. I used Detect with Urshifu to get an idea of what super effective moves they had to take him down with. My initial guess was that Torkoal knew Solar Beam, and with Drought negating the charge time, it would try to nuke my Urshifu back to the prehistoric era. This wasn't the case though. Fluttermane unleashed its Dazzling Gleam, knocking both Torkoal and Hydreigon to low health. Hydreigon terrestrialized into Terra Dark and used Flamethrower on Fluttermane, 
landing a really unfortunate crit, but not knocking it out. This detect on Urshifu arguably saved the match, as Torkoal used Yawn on him. The next turn, Fluttermane used Dazzling Gleam to wipe Hydreigon out while knocking Torkoal down to barely any health. Urshifu outsped Torkoal and was able to get the cheeky Aqua Jet off, knocking him out. While this turn was almost flawless on my end, the life orb Fluttermane was holding caught up to it, knocking me down to just Urshifu. This is where I needed to be right. If this opponent had Dragonite somewhere in his back line for some reason, rather than any of the other three Pokemon, winning this battle would be almost impossible. To my relief, they sent out Crabominable and Arbaliva. I countered both of these Pokemon, but they both also countered me. I knew they would be looking to seal the deal here and wipe out my Urshifu in one go. So I Terrastalized into Water-type for some added bulk and detected to see their super effective moves. Sure enough, Crabominable had Thunder Punch and Arbaliva tried using Giga Drain on me. Detect saved my Urshifu's life yet again. I hit the Crabominable with a close combat as I saw its bulk and Thunder Punch being the biggest threat, picking up the KO. Arbaliva used Giga Drain, almost completely destroying Urshifu, if not for the Focus Sash I put on it just moments before getting into the battle. And just like that, the battle came down to who was faster, and fortunately for me, Urshifu outsped the Arbaliva with another close combat, picking up the final KO. Somehow, against all odds, I got a win using this team in a Regulation D format after knowing absolutely nothing about VGC just less than a week prior. You can make the argument that I didn't come up with the team and maybe I just got lucky, which you're probably not wrong, my win-loss ratio is still 1-3 to three, and that detect, well, both detects, arguably saved my Urshifu from being sleeplocked and obliterated. But hey man, a W's a W. I'm going to ride this very small high for the rest of my life. At the end of the day, my trip to Ohio for Nationals inspired me to try stepping outside my comfort zone and try something new. Watching the competition and now actually getting into the mindset of a competitor gave me an entirely new perspective on how much time and thought is needed in each battle, all the while only having seconds to think and make a move in those battles. It also gave me an entirely new perspective on how much fun these battles can be when you finally find your rhythm. So thanks, NAIC. I'll definitely be going back in 2024, and who knows? With enough practice, maybe I'll even try my hand at regionals in between then. But that's all I have for this one, guys. I know this type of game isn't the normal type of game I'm playing on here, but I'm really just here to make fun content ranging all over the place when it comes to a genre. I just so happen to be inspired by my trip to make some related content. If you have any constructive criticism about the team that I chose and the way that I played in this video, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to support me, a sub always helps me to escape the unforgiving algorithm. I'm Poet, and I'll see you guys next time.